Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jesse Leons. This edition Stop Stories. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chasney heaps praise on the St. Lucian public for incredible conduct on the weekend. A veteran Caribbean diplomat laments the international expectation of debt payments by islands amid COVID-19. And a major player in the sport of basketball strategizes on improving skills on island. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chasney has heaped praise on the St. Lucian public for what he deemed an incredible job in adhering to the COVID-19 protocols during a time traditionally known for island-wide celebration. Honorable Chasney says he knows it was extremely difficult for nationals not to enjoy Je ne Quayol on the weekend in the grand fashion of years past. Cancelling the cultural festivity, the Prime Minister noted, resulted in major revenue losses as well as dampened spirits due to restrictions that impeded socialization. Knowing that we didn't have carnival and this was really an opportunity for us to have gotten out. Um, it's sad that we found ourselves in this situation and I don't even want to add up how much money was lost this weekend and how many persons were looking forward to selling their goods, but more importantly, the, social, the socialization that was going to take place. But I really want to thank all St. Lucians um, for adhering to the protocols, not making it overly difficult for the policemen, and not putting unnecessary pressure on the authorities. St. Lucians were urged not to compromise their safety despite the temptation to gather and celebrate in this annual festival. The plea was particularly strong given that the island has recorded a total of 18 new cases in the span of one week. The new cases that we're getting, the good news is that most of these cases are already in quarantine. So it tells us that the contact tracing and that the team at the contact tracing have been doing an outstanding job uh, and we're ahead of it, if, if I can say that. Ahead in that, we understand um, who's been affected and putting the persons at the highest risk into a quarantine situation. Sadly, um, more than likely, numbers are going to continue to rise. So the fact that we have um, a hospital facility um, dedicated for the, as a respiratory center is good news. The fact that we have over 85 doctors and nurses from Cuba here to augment um, our doctors and nurses is good news. Prime Minister Chastney encouraged the St. Lucians to continue to wear their face masks, social distance, and sanitize their hands in order to stay safe from COVID-19. We can coexist. We, we can keep our doors open. We can be open for business. Um, we can make sure that people who'd lost their jobs, they can get their jobs back. And this idea that it's either health or economics is not a fair comparison anymore. We need both. Um, clearly, we're always going to uh, be more sensitive to the health side um, because we can't bring somebody's life back. But once we continue to do what we did this weekend, um, St. Lucia, we'll be fine. And I'm, I, 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 amongst, I'm sure, a lot of other people are very proud to see how St. Lucians acted this weekend and how strong they're taking um, the recommendations of the CMO. We've got a, a great CMO, we have a great Ministry of Health, the contact tracers, great frontliners um, all throughout St. Lucia, but more importantly, we've got great citizens and we can win this battle together. We can, we can do this and, and your government is fully behind you uh, to try to do everything that we can to ensure that we see a recovery to our economy and that we continue to keep people very safe in our country. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney. In meantime, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmont George is advising everyone to limit social movements as the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise. The island has confirmed 54 cases with 27 active cases in isolation for care. The CMO says the rapid rise has resource implications. During this past week, Sunday, October 18th to Saturday, October 24th, a total of 18 new cases of COVID-19 were diagnosed in country. This is a significant number in a short period, especially when we consider the requirements to respond to these cases to ensure we contain further spread. This includes human resources for contact tracing, testing, and care of patients. There is also increasing demand on supplies for testing, PPE, and other related supplies. 
though we continue to respond promptly and effectively if we do not make a continuous effort to follow the recommended infection prevention and control guidelines, these pressures on healthcare resources shall only continue and will even increase with time. As such, the Ministry of Health will reiterate the importance of sticking to the behaviors which reduce the spread of the virus from one person to another. We make a strong appeal to everyone that if you are experiencing respiratory symptoms which include fever, cough, and sore throat, promptly go to your closest respiratory clinic for care. As long as the novel coronavirus lives among any community of mankind, all mankind remains endangered. That is according to veteran Caribbean diplomat Sir Ronald Saunders, Antigua and Barbuda's ambassador to the United States and the Organization of American States, OAS. Sir Ronald made the statement as he addressed the 50th General Assembly of the OAS. Sir Ronald noted that even the most powerful countries have been unable to stop the spread of the virus. Poor and vulnerable countries, he added, are already the first to suffer from the economic impact of COVID-19. The countries of the Caribbean from which no pandemic has ever originated and from which no international financial crisis has ever begun are among the most hardest hit. Already in many of our countries, a decade or more of economic growth and social development has been set back in seven short months, and they cannot now attain the sustainable development goals set by the United Nations. Unemployment has jumped dramatically, in some cases to 50%. Businesses have closed, some never to open their doors again. Savings have depleted. Poverty has increased, malnutrition has returned, and so too has hunger and an increase in crime. Sir Ronald observed that there are no trends identifiable today, no programs or policies that offer hope of narrowing the gap between rich and poor, particularly as Caribbean nations are facing debt burdens. And governments of small countries unable to print money as governments in powerful countries do, cannot support the private sector and they find it difficult to meet their own obligations. The international financial institutions, constrained by rules set by those who make their policies, deny concessional financing to small and vulnerable states on the basis of flawed criteria. The Paris Club demands payment of age-old debts, knowing fully well that states crippled by the, the effects of the pandemic are unable to pay. Yet, Mr. President, none will listen to the pleas for debt rescheduling and debt forgiveness, without which these nations could become basket cases with all the consequences that social and political instability will unleash. The pandemic has magnified inequalities, injustices, and unfairness. The ambassador commended the World Health Organization and the Pan American Health Organization for their commitment to the region and interventions in containing COVID-19 in the region. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is collaborating with a major player in the sport of basketball to heighten and sharpen skills here on island. We have Ryan O'Brien with a report. An initiative to develop the sport of basketball in St. Lucia came up for discussion here recently as the Vice President of Organization, Culture and Inclusion of the Toronto Raptors, John Wiggins, met with a number of officials to look into the requirements that will be needed to allow this to happen. Wiggins, whose parents were born and raised in Grosley, said the discussion was a follow-up on an initiative started five years ago to see how young enthusiasts can get more interested in the sport and to bring more basketball exposure, teaching and development to the island. Crucial to achieving this is the aspect of infrastructure 
and that includes the possibility of covering the VG Malibaba Sports Complex and to bring it up to NBA standards. The meeting was to find out where we are with laying the groundwork and how we figure out a way forward, how people are going to come together, both the ministry, the federation, myself, how we can set a foundation for the NBA to come in here and bring programming and enhance the infrastructure of basketball. It's a great sport. The kids love it here and St. Lucia, the West Indies and the Caribbean are being targeted as the next hub for basketball to grow throughout the world, especially by the NBA. So this was a follow-up to see where we're at and how do we move forward. Kofi Dovo is the director of Tropical Studio Designs Architects. He was present for the discussions, which took place at a conference room at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. It's very possible to cover the, the VG multipurpose um, court. Um, the option that has been explored right now is to use a steel frame, um, almost like a, a factory shed, you know, to make it simpler. Um, the alternative of using the, the, the steel frame, I mean, with a truss covering, is to be able to gain large spans. Okay, so it's suitable for, I mean, um, sports arena. Where we are now is that based on what um, the Vice President, um, Mr. John Wiggins, discussed in the meeting is that that may not necessarily meet the standards of NBA. So now what we want to do is revisit and look at how we can create a more um, desirable, you know, setting, okay, that will, you know, be okay with NBA. So, and it's a process that probably cannot be done in one go. So it has to be a phased approach. So what we're going to do is go back to the drawing board and look at how we can phase that and make it, you know, possible. Dovo said all things being equal, the covering of the codes can be completed within 8 to 12 months from commencement of works. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. St. Lucia bids farewell to outgoing Canadian High Commissioner, Her Excellency Marie Legault. His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack hosted a ceremony for the diplomat at Government House. A send-off as heartwarming as St. Lucia-Canada relations. Government officials and members of the diplomatic corps gathered to honor departing High Commissioner, Her Excellency Marie Legault, for her transformative endeavors in St. Lucia on Canada's behalf. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney expressed gratitude to the departing diplomat for her humane approach to the job. Invaluable input goes into Canada's policy coming from your office and I think that's the part that we're all going to miss is the compassionate side that you've had and your willingness to look past just being a diplomat but being a humanitarian. So on that note I want to say thank you. You're going to be missed but hopefully it's au revoir, but not goodbye. Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra, Minister with Responsibility for External Affairs, highlighted notable initiatives during Her Excellency Legault's tenure. These include the establishment of a Canadian visa application centre on island, the school computer program, the first house project for at risk women and children, and support amid the pandemic. We were really heartened when we were trying to get quite a number of our St. Lucian citizens who were stranded in Canada to COVID and you gave up space that was reserved for Canadians on the plane so St. Lucians could come. The External Affairs Minister encouraged the outgoing ambassador to continue advocating for St. Lucia. There is some unfinished business I would, it would be remiss of me if I did not mention here and that is the visa-free access that we used to enjoy where St. Lucians were able to visit Canada without having to apply for a visa. As friends we hate to ask for too much but uh, when we really have a true and solid friendship we believe we can ask for the things we need and we are sincerely hoping that you're being closer to capital perhaps closer to the to Immigration Canada perhaps where these decisions are made that you will continue to remember and advocate for St. Lucia.
High Commissioner Legault reflected on some of the highlights of her time representing Canada in St. Lucia and reaffirmed Canada's commitment to the region. We've worked on climate change and the crisis and, and uh, the resilience. And you mentioned, Prime Minister, the SIDS issue, which is still ongoing. Uh, there's a lot of, of issues into that, and we're, we will continue to work on that. It's by far not solved. Concessional financing. Um, and you just mentioned the financing for development that uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and Prime Minister Holness are working on, and we will continue to completely be engaged on that. Thank you for your support in the UNSC campaign, the United Nations Security Council seed campaign. We really appreciated that. A token of appreciation was presented to Her Excellency Legault on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Léonce reporting. Up next, we have Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Quayal. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an affected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. Or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. Time now for the NTN Nouvelle Aquial with Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur Ta Jesse, Monsieur Madame Department, qui n'est pas responsable pour information en gouvernement cette ci GIS, et Télévision Nationale puis à NTN, car vous êtes Nouvelle Aquial. Vous êtes Primus Hutchinson. Ministre de Santé cette ci registre des cas neufs. Maladie Corona, ça c'était dimanche passé, le 25 en mois d'octobre 2020. Des cas neufs, ça a porté les mots maladie en cette ci pour 54 ans après ça. Selon le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, il a trouvé tous les cas, ça il y a un exercice pour découvrir les gens qui tenaient contact et puis l'autre c'est cas. Il a aussi déjà en quarantaine. Car les mots 53, du euh, branché et puis K43, pendant K limo C44, c'est un qui ni pré contact et puis K limo C4, qui aussi ni contact et puis K39. Situation ça la porté limo qui en isolation présentement pour 27. K limo C43, c'est un femme, 34 l'année de l'âge, hot power scastry, pendant K limo C44, c'est un jeune homme. 25 ans de l'âge, Hod Powers Gozile. Selon Dr. Belma George, pour semaine qui passe, le département de santé a découvert 18 cas de maladie de corona à PIA. Si un mois, vous remarquez que ça, c'est un limo qui est très significant. Le cas considéré, c'est une nécessité qui mérite 
pour adresser le mauvais malade de ça. En particulier, c'est divers équipements qui ont été brisés pour conduire l'examination à ce monde. Dr. Melman George Vetiki, malgré le département qui a continué pour adresser ces situations plus vite que possible, mais si les gens ne pas à suivre ces recommandations qui sont en place avec ces WEG, ça a porté un mauvais pèse à ce ressource du département. Alors, il a fait un grand appel pour tout le monde suivre tout le protocole qui est en place, qui a aidé à réduire la capacité de la maladie de Corona pour se manger à cette ci Encore encore, le ministère a plaidé et puis même le public pour, si vous avez bien ces problèmes d'étouffement et puis la fièvre, tout ce qui c'est pour vous vite visiter ces cliniques-là. Tout, euh, tout jour, vous avez tous tout les jours pour servir un masque à Sophie Djaï en public. Pour rester six pieds de stas, rodion à l'autre, laver la main et sanitiser. Et vous avez estené à servir un mouche à poche. Pour faire ça, vous avez un soupagné à mouche à poche, servir un coup de bois. Ministre des Affaires et Éducation, c'est le Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobot. J'ai fait un grand appel pour les citoyens pays là pour plus de précautions pour protéger yo, la famille et le public là, contre les malades du corona. Pour ça, le département d'éducation, j'ai fermé l'école pour une autre deux semaines. Et ça dépend de la de de situation en ces semaines qui sont venues. Le ministre de l'Éducation a aussi demandé les parents pour que ces mamans là en caille et pour toute précaution pour faire yo comprendre la sévérité de la situation. Sa la. Lavez la main. Nettoyez au lit ou en caillou. Nettoyez ces bagailles-là au cas touché souvent. Couvert fidjaïo. Là au cas estené et bien au cas toussé la nuit en manière pour faire ça. En bois ou en zépon. Alors, à nous changer ces bagailles-là nous ça fait pour nous empêcher ça faire Covid-19 ça là détruit pays nous et nation nous. Docteur Rigobert a aussi conseillé le public là pour respecter et obéir ces pieds de stas à parmi toutes les autres règles là qui sont établies pour protéger le public pays nous. Si vous n'êtes pas obligé de parler en Fidja et en Mounoussa, vous avez distance pour parler de yo. Tout ce bagay ça, yo pizza tout ka kwe ce bagay ki simple, mais c'est ça docteur dit nous pour faire. C'est ça nous ça qui ka travail. Alors, à nous faire un effort pour nous faire ce bagay ça, pour qu'on nous même, pour famille nous, pour voisinage nous, ba riche nous. Souple na mado pour observer conseil ministre de santé et point pour précaution là au dehors là. Second appointment à ministère des Affaires et Développement Économique, Monsieur Claudia Simonwell, qui a fait un appel aux citoyens cette fois-ci, coopérer et puis gouvernement en observant ce journée pour réfléchir à ce toute activité que le gouvernement a engagé en pays. Ça qui connaît plus mais qu'on World Statistics Day, qui pays qui a observé tous les cases en mois d'octobre. Ça veut dire qui a été le monde qui employé en pays? Les mots, les étudiants à l'école avec des de performance, situation de santé et la population a parmi plusieurs autres. Selon M. Emmanuel, le département est très appréciable pour les membres publics pour coopérer et pour faciliter l'effort pour trouver ces informations. Et c'est ça qu'a a fait tous les 10 ans. Et quand nous savons, ça c'est un. Un département qui est bien important pour aider à calter la discussion de nos cartes dans les mouvements publics. Quand nous savons que COVID uh, a affecté saint ici et que nous écoutons ces situations et ces discussions dans les TV, dans les radios, nous avons une pile position qui a fait, mais ça nous voulait really encourager le public. C'est pour servir information qui est officielle et information qui est reliable et, et solide. Et ça veut dire information qui a amassé à une manière qui, qui est acceptable international. Et puis c'est ça nous really, qui nous a demandé qu'on nous observe 
um, <laughs> World Statistics Day, Jew Statistics Mondial, that Munkai, <coughs> Munkai were important for not just uh, parler um, about qui manier yo quoi en situation yé, mais pour assurer that qui yoni um, information qui qui amasse bien et solide en manière scientifique. Laisse à l'ouvrage dans discussion ou qu'il parle en position qui solide. Ek, monsieur Madame, ça c'était côté nous trois bout nouvelles nous pour aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour qu'à garder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que je n'ai pas encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous n'avez pas besoin de votre nouvelle. En quoi est la présent? Je vous remercie pour votre présent. Jesse. Merci à Peel Primus. Well, that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or our YouTube channel. I'm Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned for more NTN programming.